What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back with another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. Well, y'all, it is officially less than one week away from Election Day. It is one week away. Y'all, this has been the longest. And I know we say this every time. And I probably, if you pull a Black News episode from last time, from four years ago, and I probably wasn't, I don't, was I doing Black News then? Child, what was I doing then? I don't remember. But if you pull up whatever it was I was doing. I'm willing to bet I was talking about how th- it was the longest year we've ever had in politics. This has been extremely brutal for the simple fact that black women, it has been proven once again, what we already knew black women have to be exceptional and we have to be 45,000 times better than everyone else in order to be considered the same. The double standards have been double standarding. And honestly, I don't think even think after the election, it's going to change. I think this is just going to magnify a level of angst within people that we just going to have to deal with in, in perpetuity. The same way when Barack Obama was elected president, that made uh, everybody who was not black on edge permanently. We are in this situation. And I say this, I'm going to say it again. You cannot tell me that we are not in this situation because we have the audacity to elect a black man for the president of the United States. I re- if, yeah, we would have been on this path, but I think that really gave people, that solidified to people that what they view as, as America was about to change. And the America that people were fed those days are over and it's almost over. And then you have a certain side of this political fight fighting for their lives. Literally, they fighting to remain the majority. That's what this is about. It is about maintaining status quo. But with that said, I cannot wait to vote for that black woman. I have early voting has started in L.A. County as um, as of this weekend. If you're not an L.A. child. We got a a thousand propositions on the ballot. Every year we got propositions. It'd be anywhere from voting on rent control to uh, marijuana, anything you can think of. There is a proposition for it. They send out books. So we got to, for us to review. Child, I got the study. I got to go online, find the cheat sheets because it'd be cheat sheets for people to follow. I got to get myself prepared so I can go vote. I am going to vote early. I'm hoping I can get my studying done by this weekend at the latest Friday, Saturday, so I can go on in there and do what I was have been excited to do since this summer when Kamala Harris was announced as the presidential pick. I cannot wait to vote, vote for that black woman. I cannot wait to vote for that HBCU grad, for that member of the Divine Nine for that educated, smart, beautiful black woman. I can't wait to get in the booth, get, get in the booth. Like I'm about to be up in the booth. Okay. I can't wait. And I'm going to be crying. Y'all know I'll be crying. I end up, I'll be crying and I know what I'm going to be crying. Cause it's very emotional. This is a very emotional time, regardless of what side you own. And if you're listening to Black News as a listener, I, I kind of have an idea of which side you on, right? Now, granted, the episode where I talked about Black men, y'all, if y'all go to my YouTube and look at the comments, the Black men was going crazy in it. They, y'all, some people aren't well. One posted, one man posted, I sound like I, I, I marry or date white men. Like, where you get that from? Now, granted, I will date me a white man. I have not, but I will. I'm open to it. But still, but I know I'm going to be crying. This is emotional. Whether you are for what's happening or not, 
people have done the mental gymnastic to try to justify whatever they're going to justify. This is a historic moment that we are in. And for, especially when it comes to like, and after going to homecoming, this has really been on our spirit. Yeah, a lot of us went to HBCUs before it became trendy on TikTok, right? Before it got cool again, there was a different world cool for uh, HBCUs. There was the the 90s um, uh, HBCU apparel trend for HBCUs. But then there was a moment where going to H- HBCU wasn't as trendy in that moment of time. Where people used to tell you, if you went to an HBCU, you're not going to know how to interact in white spaces. HBCUs don't prepare you for the real world. It is not the same education as a black school. I mean, as a, a PWI, all of this crap. And now that HBCUs are trendy again, you know, there is a different conversation. But having being able to vote for Kamala Harris, to me, that does also signal and it validates everything that we knew when we enrolled at whatever our respective HBCU was, were to say, we just as good as the rest of y'all. And I'm getting the same, if not a better and a higher level of education at this institution than you are over there. And mind you, there was a study that I just saw released that ranked the like highest paid black graduates by school, Child Morehouse in them all, number one. And this is over PWIs. So I don't want to hear it no more. I'm about to go up in the booth and I am excited. I'm so excited to vote for Kamala Harris for president. I hope you all do the same. I hope you all did your part this election season. Even if that was donating, whether you knocking on doors last minute, phone banking, text banking, making postcards. If you went to a rally put up a sign in your front yard. Maybe you had to cuss one of your relatives out for being stupid. Whatever the case, I hope you all, especially in this final few days, this last push, don't let up. We got to keep going. And then come Tuesday, Wednesday, which I don't think it's going to be resolved that fast because you know, your boy and them are, the red hat's already setting it up for them to deny whatever happens regardless. But I really think Kamala Harris is about to take this. I really do. I really do. Um, so let me know y'all thoughts about it. Obviously, next week for Black News, I will try to hold off recording the episode with enough time to talk about the election. But when I record this, it's usually before election night. So I may have to wait until the week after to really talk about it. But I'm going to update as much as I can um, prior to this being released on Thursday. Because when it come out Thursday, child, I done recorded three, two, three, three days before that. But regardless, let me know your thoughts about it. You can hit me up at Canelia on social media. Child, I went to homecoming, child. I, homecoming was homecoming in. Ooh. Y'all, homecoming was homecoming. Okay. I love homecoming. I know I've said this before, but I'm going to keep saying it. Homecoming is HBCU homecoming. I'm going to be very specific with this one because I know I'll be looping the PWIs in because everybody got their experience, right? They be doing their thing over at the PWI, down to the PWI. But homecoming at HBCUs is one of the most special events or weekends for black people that is happening just in our generations and and within this time frame that that homecoming's been happening baby homecoming oh imagine you know how you get that hug from somebody you ain't seen in so long but you you know you got so much love for them and, and life just takes y'all in different directions right you still got love for them and you hope they're well and but you miss their you miss being around them and you just value everything that you share with them and that hug you get from that person that's all weekend imagine that hug for three days straight home y'all 
And again, I keep saying this because it is very real to me. It's, this is even one of the reasons why I keep saying or considering possibly moving back to the East Coast. Being in LA as an HBCU grad is not as fulfilling for me as it was when I was on the East Coast and as it is for some of my friends that are on the East Coast. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody's experience because I met some, I know some Cali HBCU grads who do not feel the same as I, as I do. And it could be because the people that I care about the most that I also went to HBCU with, HBCU, my HBCU with, are not out here. But it's just not the same being out here. Even the meetups, like, they be cool, but like it ain't the same. So whenever I go to homecoming specifically, I feel like I am filling my cup back up with just whatever I need. It's just a great time. Um, So a couple things that I noticed in addition to, and this ain't about the list that I gave, like the homecoming do's and don'ts. This just some additional points that I'd like to share and things that I've noticed. Ain't no particular order, right? It's just going to be top of mind, whatever I share first. First of all, they need to bring back smoking sections. I'm going to go straight, jump straight into that one. They need, And this ain't just for homecoming. I put this on my list because it was magnified by homecoming. But y'all, this need to be countrywide. I think with the um with the rebranding of smoking culture, and I say rebranding because y'all remember back in the day, used to go smoke cigarettes everywhere on the plane. I have friends who used to work in certain office buildings back in like the early 2000s, late 90s. They you could smoke at work. I think now that smoking has shifted to marijuana and vaping, people forget that not everyone likes those smells or can handle being around smoke, right? I think people who smoke forget that because you're having an enjoyable experience doesn't mean that I'm not choking to death. To the point I was around so much smoke in particular at one event, afterwards I felt nauseous. Like I was almost about to vomit because of the amount of smoke to secondhand that was just in my lung. It was, ugh, I couldn't handle it. But would it be ideal if we could just create a smoking section, indoors and outdoors, child, get over there. Get over there with it. And I don't want my hair smelling like it. I just, ugh, I just, whatever. But that's just top of my mind. Second, I love homecoming. I want to go back every year. I am officially going to try to go back to homecoming every year. It is expensive. Homecoming is not cheap if you are out of town. It can be expensive if you are kind of local or within a a four-hour distance because you ain't really got to fly. But that flight, they be jacking up the prices of the hotels. You got to buy your outfits, child. I got beat over the head. I spent so much money going to homecoming, but I have officially decided I am going to try my best to go every year. I think the battle is going to be getting you, be getting your crew together because everybody don't want to go everywhere. Every, somebody going to miss. But if we can get a good crew together every year, I want to go every year. I say this every year, but I'm really going to try now. I'm really going to try. Next, liquor is nasty. I learned this at homecoming and I thank God I got to the point where I feel like liquor is nasty because baby, at one point, you know, during that pandemic, we was all taking a little sippity sip and a little sippity sip. At one point, I was like, hey, you, your girl, I, I can go down on the deep end. I'm going to be like Richard Weber on Grey's Anatomy. You know, he's been battling for 25 seasons, okay? But I grabbed a bottle or a cup of something. I think it may have been tequila. It was something. And I don't really be drinking no more. But I took that sip. I was like, this nasty. Like, it was just not delicious. Look, now, I'm going to drink it over the event weekend I can drink socially and I'll just have a little sip or two when I'm like out at like a party or special occasion but it really confirmed and I'm happy I got to this point like I said child that liquor be nasty 
It is not good. It is not delicious. I have officially tapped out. I'm going to drink me some on vacation. I'm going to give a little sip, 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 sip. But I ain't going to be too much because I just, it was just not delicious. But with that said, I told y'all I was on a quest to try different drinks. I did not try any of the Sir Davis. Nobody had none of the Sir Davis that I thought that I saw. Unless they was hiding it or drinking it on the low because the bottle bought 90 bucks. And I can understand not want to be just outside all willy nilly. But shout out to my boy, Russell, one of the alphas. He was the original plug at homecoming with the alpha tea. Y'all that drink gooder than a mug. Let me tell y'all something. The alpha's got the best fraternity drink. And I hey, I'm so sorry. If you wanted to, if you wanted to bruz the Kappa's, the bros, the noops, the sigmas, the iodos, I'm so I apologize in advance for declaring this this way. But I have had noob juice, I have had omega oil, I had Sigma Punch back in the day. I don't y'all don't know what the iodos be doing, baby. But I, I hey. I'm so I don't know what y'all be doing, but I've tasted four fraternity drinks, and I have to tell y'all the Alpha's got the best fraternity cocktail. They got the best drink, and I'm gonna tell you why. And it's I feel like something. This is an experience that you can really get at the homecoming. You can get this at the homecoming. I'm telling you, this why you need to go to homecoming, not just for the experience, but for the Alpha tea. Because we wouldn't hang. We ain't having undergrad. Okay, I ain't never had no tea. I ain't even know they had to drink. The alpha tea tastes like grown men made it. And if you've ever had any of the fraternity drinks, you know what that means. I'll elaborate. Some of the others taste like somebody just bought one of them big old McDonald's coolers and threw a bunch of shit in it and dumped some Everclear on top of it and let it sit outside overnight. The alpha tea tastes like grown men who have jobs and contribute back to their HBCU, made the drink. Now, the first sip, it hit me in my chest. That that thing knocked me straight into the chest. It knocked me right into the middle, okay, in the heart of it. To the point I was like, oh, I can't drink this because I don't know what's in it. One, y'all not got that sensitive stomach, now I can't just be drinking stuff. But my line sisters, who can't, they got a better, they got a better handle on them. They was, they, they was locked in. Now, off that first sip, I was like, this is really tasty. Hints of blackberry in there. Like, I can, I, low key, I can decipher what's in it, but I ain't gonna do that to you. But then later on that night at the tailgate late night version edition, child, I went back, double back, got me some ice, got me a little cup of ice, put some more tea in it. That thing, after it done sat all day at the homecoming, let me tell you something, that, that thing was delicious than a mug. Alpha's got the best tea. So ranked, they got the best drink. So ranked, I will put alpha tea at the top, number one. I will put the noob juice, number two, the omega oil, number three, and I will put the Sigma Punch as four. And the only reason I put the Sigma Punch below the the um the Omega Oil is because I am 40 plus. I ain't got time to be walking around with no blue tongue. Okay. The Sigma Punch is blue. I am too old to be having blue tongue. I just we are we are grown. So just so y'all know, if y'all ever around some alpha tea, if y'all at the homecoming, find you a way to get some. Next, one thing that I found out, me and my line sisters, a few of us, we cougars, man. Y'all, I'm a cougar. And I'm not saying it as if I, if I, like I volunteered, volunteer for the cougar-ism, for the cougar. And I ain't volunteer for the cougar It was communicated to me that I am officially a cougar. And by communicated, I mean the young boys was on me. That y'all, I y'all, and I'm, I ain't saying it like yeah, they be on me. I'm saying it like, like you know in your mind, you know what's coming, or you hear people talk about it. They be like, yeah, once you get certain, the, the people, young boys be no, y'all. It happened in real time. The young, the young boys was on me, and by young, I'm talking about twenty five. That 25 through 32 pocket, baby, you would have thought I was on camp. Like, I'm 40 plus. Now, I'm flattered. Let me say this. I'm flattered because TT still got it, okay? I still got it. It didn't, it didn't remind me of when I was in my youth. Okay, my peak years, 
of, of bad bitching, hey, I will say from about 2005 to 2010, I feel like I was transported back to that time. Child, they was trying to rub on my hand, like flirting. I Hey, if you are 40 plus and you are listening to this, whether you married or single or not, it don't matter. We are cougars. We can run from it. We can embrace whatever, however you want to deal with it. But just know now the world has placed, have, has bestowed upon us the classification of cougar. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I'm accepted. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but here's where we are. And lastly, Every time I go to homecoming or I'm around people that I went to school with, went to college with, it, it it's a time to reflect. I had an opportunity on Thursday. I walked around campus and y'all know Hampton got one of the most beautiful campuses in the country, not just HBCU. I'm talking to just, in, just in general, beautiful campus on the waterfront, very scenic, old buildings. It's just very aesthetically pleasing. But I had time to walk around and really think about a time there and who I am today. And people always say this about, everybody says this about their HBCU. I won't say everybody, but a lot of people. But telling my father that I needed to go to Hampton, and if I didn't go to Hampton, I wasn't going to college, was probably the most important statement of my entire life. That statement change the entire trajectory of my life no like without any question and him listening and respecting that literally did more for me than anything that I can think of because you know I, I, I've said this on black news when it was time to enroll in college I wanted to go to Hampton I applied to Michigan State because they had on-site admissions at my high school. So I was like, fine, let me just go ahead and roll in there. Got in on-site, whatever. But in-state tuition was really, I could have went to Michigan State. with my. I had like some local scholarship, in-state tuition. Child, we could, I could have went for about $5,000 a year. And you already know back then, Hampton tuition, it was a grip. And it is now still even more, but y'all get the point. But I knew as, an, as a junior in high school, when I went on the black college tour during winter break and we pulled up to Hampton and we got off that bus and we walked around campus. I knew from that very moment that I needed to be at this school. I called my parents from the payphone. I told my daddy from that payphone, I want to go here. This is it. This is the school. This is the place. I knew it. I knew it and I had a, what I had whatever in me and it it, nothing but God, literally, this is nothing but God for me to declare and to know as a 16 year old, 16, 17 year old, what would be best for me in my life and my future. And to declare that in that statement and to basically put my daddy in a corner. Like if you don't do this, I gave him an ultimatum child was terrible, but I felt like that's what I had to do and it worked. That was the best thing that I could have ever done hands down. And every time I'm back at Hampton, I realize it even more, even in my life and who I've become and who I could have been if I would have made a different choice. Child, it wasn't nothing but God. That is the most important statement I've ever made. And y'all know I'm getting emotional about it because Growing up somewhere like Flint, people don't get out. They don't leave. Or they leave, but they don't, they're not afforded a lot of opportunity. Some people are. There are a lot of us who had a lot of opportunity and went on to do fantastic things. But I know, I know what my life would have become if I did not make that statement. Winter break in my junior year of high school and my senior year of high school when I was applying to that one college. I only applied, if we take Michigan State off the table, I only applied to one college. Imagine the risk. Y'all know how bold and that's risky. Like one college? 
Child, I was banking on that. That was it. I put all my chips on the table. Here, all of this on this. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get in. If I wouldn't have got in, guess what? I probably would have applied the next time. But I can't, y'all, hands down, that's the best decision I've made. That was the most impactful statement I've ever made. And to this day, I will, I will stand on that. With that in mind, if you have not been back to your school for homecoming, I had a couple of friends and a line sister who came back after not being on campus since I would say around 2006. So I was just, it was, it's just so special. If you have not had an opportunity to go back and sell it and go to homecoming, go. I don't care what school you went to. You could went to Tougaloo. Go back to Tougaloo homecoming. Morris Brown, they open back up. Go to Morris Brown's. Because it's just a special, it's just a special event. But what do y'all think? And also, if I saw you at homecoming, it was so good to see y'all. I saw a lot of y'all, Black News listeners, some of my classmates, friends. Y'all, it was so good to see y'all. And thank y'all again for listening to this podcast. But hit me up and let me know if y'all had the same experience this past week, weekend at Hampton University's homecoming or for other people at your respective school's homecoming. Let me know. You can find me at Cornelia on social media. And on a lighter note, Y'all, they done messed D Wade basketball statue all the way up. Now, they, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> now, y'all know fantastic, great, legendary basketball players get statues uh, erected in their honor, usually outside of the arena where they play. If you are in LA and you go to Staples Center, aka Crypto, because we gonna always call the Staples, they got a bunch of sports statues out there they got baseball some la king historic la kings players child the statue of Shaq. they got it hanging over the edge of one of the like the like the like in the air and he dunk like you know how he used to dunk and break the backboard child he dangling they got Shaq statue dangling from the air it's a few with kobe and then they got the kobe and Gigi statue which is really beautiful but it's just a um it's it's just a like a, a respect thing and it's just something that happens with legendary players like I mentioned. So this a few days ago on social media, there were moments going viral, floating around with Dwayne Wade being honored by the Miami Heat with his statue. Maybe and when they unloaded up uh, um uh, unveiled that thing, I don't know who that was. I've never seen that person hooping a day in my life. And D-Wade, one of my favorite players. Let me tell y'all something. Side note by D-Wade. No disrespect to Gabrielle Union, but Dwayne Wade is one of the finest men in person that I've ever seen. Y'all know you you see somebody or you're around somebody, you can feel them walk into a room. You can have your back turned and you can feel someone's energy pushing into the room. Like it just, it feels like a, like a wave of, of, of like a force field. That is D-Wade, Dwayne Wade. Child wanted to find the fine in person, fine. So when they unveiled the statue, child, who is that on the face? Who is that? Harpo, who this woman? Who is that? So y'all know the streets done, done took over. Cause black people, we ain't serious about nothing. Okay, we're going to joke and clown about everything. People started putting his statue head on his actual basketball pictures with LeBron and Chris Bosh and them. They said he looked, y'all know when you watch The Wiz and um, the, how The Wiz was looking when it was Richard Pryor. Child, they done put the Wade head statue on The Wiz. And I, I don't know how he feels about it. Apparently, though, he had a lot of input while the statue was being made. He was meeting with the sculptor and he was, you know, he was involved to an extent. So I, it's, it sounds like he saw the statue. Another report from someone on social media said in person, the statue does look like him from certain angles that were taken for social media. It looks like someone else, but they said in person it does. 
So child, we could just be talking crazy, but baby, what we saw, who, what y'all throw, push the whole thing over. Okay. Topple it over. Start from scratch. I don't know who that was. Okay. Did Pat Riley have something to do with it? Who, what, who did it? This also remind me of when, when Allen Iverson's statue in Philly was revealed and it was teeny tiny. He was crossing up, but he was like super teeny tiny. And they were clowning on social media about why Allen Iverson's statue was so little. Come to find out there was a row of other iconic Philadelphia athletes and they were also teeny tiny statues. So we could literally be on social media talking crazy about d statue and it not be that big of a deal. But I'm not going to say I'm going to go see it in person because when I'm in Miami, I think about going down to the Heat Arena. But I would like somebody to go down there and just take a look. Just take, take a look. Because if it, I, you know, I just want the best for, I just want the best for D-Wade. But did y'all see the picture on social media, child? As soon, I said, who is that? Who is that? Who that supposed to be? Face was all square and boxy. Like, I don't know who that was, baby. Child, who? Mm, let me, Gabby, help him. Okay? Help them. Mm-mm. Y'all, mm. let me know if y'all saw it though. If y'all have thoughts, also, are there, what what are the cool statues in y'all area? I told y'all about the ones out in LA. They're really like it's a bunch of them, and I didn't low key. I low key, I didn't find out how many it was till maybe this past summer. I was on a hold, and every time I go to Staples, this for a concert. I've been to maybe like one or two games, but I'm on the other side, and so I happened to slip up on one particular side, and I was like, "Yo, when these statues get there, it's a bunch of them." Really cool experience, though. Anywho, hit me up and let me know your thoughts about it. You can find me at Cornelia on social media. On this week's episode of Black News, we talked about the final few days before the official presidential election. We also talked about my homecoming experience this past year and gave a quick update to some of the things that I noticed or some new thoughts that I had. And also, we quickly talked about Dwayne Wade's statue that was unveiled in Miami this past week. Hit me up. Let me know your thoughts about all of these topics, some or none, and I'll check back with you guys next time. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again for supporting the podcast by sharing, liking, subscribing, and rating five stars on your favorite podcast app. To find more information about me, you can check me out at at Cornelia on social media, as well as on my website, which is Cornelia.com. And as always, thanks for supporting, and I'll be back next week with new topics and a new episode.